Let me kick her off. Go for it. All right. Welcome, DefCon 864. I'm Eric, also known as Cal. We're going to go ahead and get started. And tonight we're going to be pretty much having uh, an open share where we're going to start it off a bit with DC 31, DefCon 31. Uh, where Ben attended, I attended. I was mostly locked away in a corner competing in a mud contest, uh, which I did win, but it did lead me to miss out on some of the other opportunities, but it was still fun. Um, so we're going to be going through and just sharing some stories about what DEF CON 31 this year was like. Uh, we'll probably talk about some of the other conferences. We're in the conference season uh, in the, the Q4 of this year, so we got B-Sides Augusta this weekend, this Saturday. I think Atlanta's the week after. So we'll go over kind of the conference schedule a little bit, kind of if, you, if you're interested in going or if you haven't gone to them, we'll talk about those conferences, which ones that we find are some of the better ones to go to and what you might find at, at each one. Uh, and I'm interested to learn about the frog badge that Ben, aka Overcast, is gonna go over. Uh, our general tenants here are just be respectful of others, uh, be inclusive, and that's one of our core tenants. We do have our rules that we have listed on our website, which is dc864.org. Uh, you can also find us on the Discord community, which is ever-growing and always collaborative. Always enjoy the conversations that are happening there. Let's see, was there something else I wanted to cover before we kick into it? I don't think so. Invite uh, other speakers, add new ideas. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yep. Yeah. So just the overall format is we're going to go into this topic here, kind of go on the frog badge. We're going to have Overcast go, go over his take on it. Normally what we do afterwards is we'll have a section where we kind of go around, we do introductions after the, the talk, and then after introductions, then we'll do a segment where if anyone has any active projects they're working on and they want to share, you're welcome to do that. We put a limit anywhere between five and 10 minutes, um, depending on how the evening's going. Then after that, we kind of close out with just folks um, networking, mingling, and, and talking. So sometimes there's even dinner that happens afterwards. You know, people line up and she's about to dinner. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Overcast. I'm gonna grab the mic. And nobody's online right now, so I can ignore it. Ignore it, yeah. But let's see. I don't trip over all these wires and everything. Alright, so <clears> hey <throat> everybody, my name is Overcast. My real name is Ben. My parents didn't love me enough to name me Overcast first, so we had to correct that little glitch there. Uh, and that's just the handle that we go by. For those of you that are new to DEF CON or hacking culture in general, we typically don't necessarily want to give out our full name to everybody that we meet, so we come up with this interesting handle that you can go by. And some of us have had lots of different handles that we share with different communities, and Nary the Twain shall meet, so to speak. Uh, we, and then sometimes you burn your handle, so like me sharing Overcast with you all and you putting face to that fingerprint that I've left all over this is, is burned Overcast. So uh, tonight I want to share just what badge life is like. Um, and I'm new to badge life. I'm by no means a great reverse engineer, binary hack or anything like that. It is definitely something that I'm spending a lot more time in, in my personal life now that I'm kind of freed up to do a little bit more personal hacking as opposed to just uh, whatever work is dishing out here. Uh, but I want to tell you uh, real quickly that this badge is not something that I created and in general the badges that, that I'm going to show in these uh, slides here are actually uh, pretty complicated in some respects. They look really pretty. So the first thing about a badge that you may notice is they're very artistically appealing. There's some kind of gotcha or grab that comes from the design. So in this case you have you know, the Red Team Village has the Pit Boy that they did this year. Uh, and then these are the Aerospace Village uh, badges that were there. The interesting thing is they're both giving homage to the anniversary of the Wright Brothers' first flight. And there were a bunch of other add-on badges that you could get from the Aerospace Village and build them all out from there. Um, but these were sold in the villages, and I can't remember exactly what the prices were. They were north of 100 bucks. They're like 125, 140, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, one of them that I saw was like 200 bucks. I thought of Todd when I saw this one here. This is actually the front face of an engine. So this is from the car hacking village. And they all have different features and functionality. You could probably, now granted that was the prototype. Hopefully this camera is gonna stay. Um, 
and as I walked through all the different villages and took a look over a bunch of different things, they all had their different badges. They were selling them. They had big signs up, and there were usually a long line where people were buying or selling them. And, and typically what you would do is you would buy the badge as quickly as you could, and then you'd try and start figuring out all the puzzles and the challenges that were associated, if there were any, with that badge. So for 120, 140, you're getting something that is going to like eat up some of your time and grow a lot of your learning as you're going. So I don't know exactly what was in each of these, but I forget what day it was, I was walking, because DEF CON 31 takes over pretty much every hotel in that area. So it took over all of Caesars Forum, all of Caesars, the Link, uh, all the Red Team and AppSec Villages took over all of Flamingo. And was there, did I miss one? Was there a fifth? Was it, was it much of Caesars? <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much in Caesars. Harris, that's Harris. the other one thing of Harris. So, I mean, if you definitely got your steps in, whatever number of steps you were trying to do, because if you were going from like a red team village talk over to something over in the DEF CON groups area and the back over somewhere else for groups, you were definitely hot footing it all the, all the way through. But the cool thing is um, these are official badges for official villages, but there's also this subculture of badge creation that takes place um, by people who aren't necessarily associated with anything. They're kind of a crackdown by the goons that you can't really sell these in certain spaces and they were kind of pushing them out. So this is the, um, the Future Will Prevail badge that was put together on Indiegogo. I'm gonna need a new webcam at some point apparently. Uh, but what you'll notice here is that the actual badge that you would hang from your neck and is displayed is actually just like a graphic. It's just a visual representation um, it's actually the add-on board for the board that's underneath it. Um, you'll notice here it's got the add-on extension that's going up to it. Again, what I'm saying is the badge on the left is actually the thing that everybody is seeing. It's lit up very pretty, it's very nice, but it's actually the add-on board that's connected to the main board. But you'll notice that the main board underneath, this is the actual badge that has all the logic, the ESP32 or any other chipsets that are on it. And then this add-on chip is actually doing anything else on the top side, but the lights and the LEDs are actually underneath it. Um, the interesting thing about this badge is it was pretty beefy looking. Uh, it carried a nine volt battery next to the ESP32 uh, and then had other different logic around. And this was the badge that's put forward by the Dallas Hackers Association um, from Dallas, Texas. So <clears throat> I found their Indiegogo page uh, while I was there because I was talking with the guys as they were breaking out the badge. I just happened to bump into them on the sky bridge and here they are breaking out all these badges and they're like, hey, it's only like a hundred bucks. And I'm thinking to myself, that's a really slick looking badge for like a hundred bucks. And we started talking about it, but they said, these are all pre-orders from the Indiegogo crowdfunding thing. They're all spoken for. So they had, I think they wanted $5,000 to do the prototypes, get the badges built and get them out. They raised $7,500 uh, to create the badges. So cha-ching, a little bit of cash there on the top. So when it came to these unofficial badges, I did see some hustling um, from some of the goons to kind of move people from selling unofficial type gear and, and wares at the conference itself. But surprisingly, I bumped into just totally randomly on Thursday, early in the morning, I decided just, the crowds hadn't really gotten there yet, it was pretty early, and I was going straight in the back to the hacking village, which hadn't, hardware hacking village that hadn't even opened up yet. And there was maybe about 50 of us back in that area, just kind of waiting for all the doors to open up. And this, these two people were walking around with a black trash bag. And I'd seen them talking and handing some stuff out to some folks off to the side. And then they came around and I saw that they were pulling out these giant boards of these frogs. And at first I was like, all right, you know, that, look, that looks cute. That's, that's nice. Because most of these badges, if they did include some stuff, there was like extra soldering add-ons that you could do, things like that which if you ever go to B-Sides Augusta or B-Sides Greenville, a lot of times you're given your bare board, you're giving all your parts, and then you go off to the soldering village and you spend your time trying to like burn your hand off, getting all this welded together and hopefully everything works when you're done with it. Unless you're Kurt and everything works immediately because he just looks at it and everything solders into place. Um, so I, you know, I'm just standing there and they're handing these out and in my mind I'm thinking it's like these other villages that I've seen where they just have like literally boxes behind them of these badges and they're just selling them out first come first serve until they're all gone. But it turns out these two folks who were probably in their early 20s, um, this was the first badge that they'd ever built or put together, which that kind of perked my ears up a little bit and they just attempted it. And then I was, they said, it's like 20 bucks. It's like, done, easy, done. So 
I bought this badge and I noticed that, and I'll show it to you a little bit closer here. Um, you, you're given this, it came in a, uh, I didn't bring it, but it basically came in this static resistant bag and I took it out expecting it to just be full of parts, just that you'd have to like solder on because I saw some of the folks had it and they were making comments that they were just put together. But I misunderstood them because if you'll notice, my bag, it, my badge is listed up there at the top and it's number 26 out of 28 total. So they made 30 badges. Two of them were the dev boards that those two kept and there were only 28 of us that were running around at the con. So to randomly bump into these two noobs in the hardware hacking arena for badge life I was super stoked. So then the guy next to me makes a comment, you know, I wonder if there's any secrets on it. And the girl goes, there definitely might be. <laughs> Love, you know, thank you for adopting a frog. Be sure to give him lots of hugs. And in my mind I'm going, man, if there is a freaking flag on this that we gotta walk around like hugging our badge, uh, that's gonna be really weird. So <laughs> it came with this manual and we read this on Friday. So I got this badge on Thursday. <laughs> I may not have read it on Friday, but it, it's actually pretty cool put together. It's a uh, single fold accordion style and just rolls out, okay? Lots of great creativity in this. So already I'm just kind of blown away. So the, the, the dude next to me, when we get this, I'm kind of looking at the badge and I think there's a couple things on here that are jumping out to me already. And he says, you know, let's just go sit down for a little bit and just put our heads together and see what we can find. Because we, we saw a few things, because they showed us real quickly um, what the badge has on it, right? It's just, and I'll show you here in a second. Let me go back a couple slides and I'll show you what we were looking at. Because the first thing you do, you know, when you get any new technology, you boot it up, you immediately start looking at the screen. And this, this little tiny LCD screen, my badge had Kermit sipping tea as a gif. And then there's other frogs on there, but the two frogs that I had unlocked on my badge by default were not the same as the other two. So immediately we knew there's got to be, and you're looking at an ESP32 chip, so you automatically know there's got to be some way that we're going to, you know, swap frogs here. So this guy and I, we go sit down, there's maybe two other people, and we start like looking over this badge and thinking, okay, there's got to be some, some ways that we can just start at the top here, going cold. We introduce ourselves and go around. Turn, come to find out, this guy actually won his black badge at DEF CON in 2009 to, with the Uber hack that kind of took place with that too. So that was really cool. And then as we met the other people, I think we got up to 17 in a signal group chat as we were going through it. And I, I would love to show you that scroll because as we're pulling stuff out of the image that we're reverse engineering, it's like, uh, it breaks down and spell out idiot sandwich, so we knew that was not in the right direction, so we had to go back to a different route, but... Uh, so that was the making up to 30 friends, right? So, you know, we made a couple contacts, and I'm not kidding, those two that were selling the badge as soon as they were done, like, they were selling them out like hotcakes, and I, I, I think it was because they were trying to get away from the goons. Like, as soon as they got rid of it, selling it to, like, three or four of us, they sprinted down the hallway sold it to three or four more, sprinted down another hallway. So they were gone. Like, I don't think I saw them for the rest of the con. Um, and then it, it immediately made me wonder, because if you look at this, like, if, the, if you're looking at this badge, like, what, is there anything on here that jumps out at you? And I know this is pretty far away for some of you. The eyes. Okay, so you notice those eyes are closed. In the bag, this is what you get. You get a temperature and humidity sensor. That's the really tiny chip down there. Mm. You get an ESP Woom 32 wireless controller, micro SD slot, a 32 gig micro SD card, preloaded with the image that boots. For 20 bucks. We're already past $20, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put in there this strap, which who knows. Uh, you got two unlocked frogs, it's fully assembled, and it came with three googly eyes, which is really weird to me because I've seen a lot of frogs and toads. I got two eyes, man. <laughs> So I had this third eye. Uh, I'll show you where I stuck that. After we here. So this is what uh, Servo did. He threw it into a, he raced back up to his hotel room and he started pulling, trying to pull the firmware off. Uh, there were a lot of bugs with it um, when we first started looking into it. Uh, accidental reset. I started playing around with just button combinations and if you press all four buttons at the same time, congratulations, you've just you, like wiped and reset your, your badge. So all that work that you had done up to that point on whatever that was, is reset and gone, which stinks because we figured out really quickly, and I'm, I'm gonna do the demo here in a second, 
But for the two frogs that I had, I could go to somebody else who had different frogs, and I could send you a frog, you could receive the frog, and now you were up to three, and vice versa. Okay, so you're slowly building these frogs. But some of them won't unlock just by sharing. Like we quickly realized that we didn't have everything uh, that we needed. There's a tattoo on the arm that, I'm, I, and I don't want to read it out loud, I should have just shown you everything on here, but there's a Chinese tattoo on the arm over here that if you take a picture of it and you send it over Google Translate or some uh, privacy protected translation service, it will translate to share eight times. And sure enough, after you reach the eight time of sharing, it unlocks a totally different frog that none of us have had access to that came out of the blue. Um, we also found some issues. We successfully were able to reverse engineer the image and try and find the image files to try and unlock those manually by decrypting and reversing the images. Uh, however, when we recompiled or reloaded it back into the uh, frog and resubmit it up, there's obviously some kind of a checksum that was built into it because it clearly was was flaking out. It, it would basically corrupt the image. Uh, so we reached out, we actually invited the uh, developers into the signal chat and they, I think at that point we were maybe at like a hundred or more pictures and chats and stuff that we'd figured out. Uh, and they were like, oh yeah, and they hadn't released yet the code on GitHub, so we didn't have access to that. We didn't have that website that was just up here really. Um, there was also on the back of the badge, I'll show you in a second, there's binary. And when you translate or decode that, it comes out to say NFC, which is exactly what I want to do for a badge that has Chinese writing on it and a bunch of wireless stuff is take my phone, go NFC over it, and then immediately go to whatever website it takes you to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grabbed the guy next to me's burner and immediately <laughs> <laughs> burned his account. And then it was funny because we all got so stoked into this, we completely did ignored the manual. And so at the bottom of the manual, there's like these little hand-drawn arrows, and it's very cute. You saw, you saw what I put up here, right? It's very cutesy, artsy, decorated stuff. And then, I forget who it was, but somebody was like, hey, the arrows on here seem to match up with what we're seeing on the controls. Like, if you press them in a sequence, it kind of does other things. And so somebody had locked, I unlocked the temperature sensor, but I couldn't get back to it. Like, it's one of those things where you're playing the video game, and you're like, what was that combination? Because I, I cannot repeat that same process again. <clears throat> All right, so now we're going to come to the demo side. So this was my other favorite frog, Hypnotoad, um, from the world-renowned Futurama. So let me flip over to this. All right, so you'll notice that originally when I showed you the frog's board originally had slits for the eyes at the top. So the googly eyes that you put on here, um, that's, that's there. And then on the back, I stuck the third one. Uh, so real quick to walk through it, you've got the Chinese writing on the left arm. I'm going to try and zoom in on it. That translates to share eight times. And then on the back, and I'm gonna turn it on too, there's binary all around this circle here. And that's the binary that translates to NFC. So if you hold your phone over it, NFC pops up and it shows like open in Firefox or open in Safari or whatever your default browser is, whatever that is. And of course you say yes to mm. all of that. Mm. But because it was originally written in Chinese, you do it as quickly as possible. You just click on it as fast as you can. It just immediately bypasses everything else. Now, one of the other things that I didn't say earlier was, you, you notice there's a lot of masking tape over the back. These were just open solders on the back, and we were seeing some badges, like, building up the static on your shirt as you walked around, and you're like, I know I had, like, because there was kind of like bragging rights. It's like Pokemon, right? You got to collect them all. So it was like, I know I had 12, and now I'm back down to three. Like, what, what happened here? And so sure enough, it found out that, you know, static discharge was building up on the board, and it was disconnecting. So we wrapped that out. And honestly, I had the most fun with this because when you're just totally figuring something out from scratch with that black box approach, that's kind of like the most fun. Now this, this badge, uh, so you can see it turned on and I've got the first frog listed here or shown here on the screen. And you've got buttons on the side. There's cancel or back, previous, share, enter, and next, okay? So top and bottom, just cycle through the frogs that you have. That's a secret frog that you got unlocked. That's a custom image frog. So if you figure out how to hack the image or upload your own custom image, that one will unlock. But then you can just kind of cycle through all these different frogs that you've got here. That's 360 spin, which really doesn't look like a frog. It looks like a weird bear that was in a refrigerator for a while. <laughs> um, Hypnotoad, uh, Scooch. Yeah, I don't even remember what the name of that one was. Uh, Hello. When you unlocked them, were you able to pull the uh, images off? The That's what we tried to do, right? So we took two images and we were trying to find the deltas, right? Trying to figuring out that most of the code would be the same between them, but where's the gap? 
you know, if I have these two frogs, you have these two frogs, maybe we can find out, you know, where the hex is. And it didn't, it didn't pan out well. And I come to find out later on that they were doing like an AES uh, encryption and stuff on some of the different images and things like that. But, and then there's Kermie, you know, wet. This was my favorite one. I walked around with this one for the most, most of the time, especially since my badge, we were resetting it like all the time. So I went back to having only my two frogs. And this was my favorite out of the two. Uh, Hacker Toad is another one. And then we're right back to here to Scooch. So now you've got an add-on board here. There were no add-ons, but you've got the add-on functionality added right into this. All right, so if you're on this frog and somebody else is in the space and they have the same badge and you want to share something, you click the share button and it brings up this screen, which is not going to display on 1080p. <laughs> But it'll tell you the name of the frog, and it says send frog. You can do receive frog or back. So if you have your badge, you want to get this frog, obviously you set yours into receive. I send to send. And when you do that, when I say send, you'll notice that the ESP controller kind of goes a little bit wackadoodle. Right, so now, now it's opening up. And if you, op if you pull up your, uh, like your wireless settings on your phone, you'll be able to see that there's a um, wireless network that's popped up, and it, well, it should be anyway. if I'm not even seeing it now. Um, but it used to pop up with your frog's name. So for a while I thought that's the avenue. So I was trying to intercept the traffic, dump it all down and parse that out. Maybe try and read the stream that was going across. Uh, but that didn't pan out. But then accidentally, because again, the old PS1 button masher days, and now I'm not going to be able to do it right as I'm sitting here with you guys. <laughs> Demo gods are not your favorite. Here we go. All right, so this unlocks the status screen. So it tells you, you know, <laughs> it's in the green right now and it says, it's Wednesday, my dudes. And it tells you the number of shares that you've sent as well as what the temperature is. And that's when we realized that one of these secret frogs that was locked probably had something to do with the temperature sensor. And we didn't know what the sensor was at the bottom because quite frankly, I'm old. And that writing on that chip is so small. And even with a camera and zooming in, we just weren't able to figure it out. We were doing everything, and so we were breathing on it, trying to change the humidity, and you're in Vegas, right? So if you walk outside, all humidity imme immediately is gone. Or you could just pour some water on the sidewalk, maybe, and create some shirt. steam, or put it on your yeah. shirt, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then we realized that, you know, sticking it in front of the temp or, uh, thermostat, any AC unit would drop the temperature low enough and would trigger, and then you'd get the next badge, or the next frog unlocked on the badge. So it was actually a pretty cool incorporation of different things. And then the one that I figured out was the was the temperature there. So that's the bulk of it. Um, I don't think if there was anything else that was on here that I was gonna show. So that took up a ton of my time in general from just like a busyness standpoint. Uh, but one thing I, I do wanna stress about DEF CON, this was the first year I've went. Up until this year, I've always made my own con experience with DEF CON at a later date. I've always been out at some project site or stuck in home office doing some kind of crazy thing and just not able to go out. For various reasons but defcon always releases their talks online and one of the things i learned from that is i love spacing those out throughout the year and just doing like set aside time to get through those um, so when i was there i really only caught a few talks direct talks and the, i was talking to one other guy that he actually works at google uh monday night and we were just chatting about it. he said i really didn't like the defcon experience like I, I like a lot more structure and i didn't learn that until i went to defcon and at defcon it's just kind of like welcome to line con and then after it's like do whatever you want, you know, and you kind of have to roll with that. And if you if you want more structure, go to some talks, plug into a track and just ride it out for the next few days. That's totally cool. That's fine. There's really no wrong way to do DEF CON. I think technically there is one wrong way to do DEF CON maybe, but I'm not going to kind of go into that one. I think getting arrested might be doing it. Came close. Didn't do it. No, no, they probably won't be too bad. No. Had so some the, the, the casino... That's uh, different. Yeah. So, uh, let me go back over to my slide deck because there's a couple other things that I want to share uh, before I turn uh, back over to doing project time. Um, Can you imagine if the MGM and or Caesars hacks had happened during that moment? Well, I've already heard a couple people oh. saying, suspicious that it was only a couple weeks before. Oh, before. I'm like, and they're like, and it was at MGM? I'm like, no, but really at MGM? I'm like, no. Uh, let's see. You start from this line. Let's see if this does this. Okay. So yeah, here we go. So for one hundred and forty dollars, you can get this lie detector badge. 
<laughs> and this was a badge sold by the Tor Project. Okay? We love the Tor Project. But you'll notice this massive onion. This is, this is not an image. I know the camera doesn't really portray this very well at this angle. This is an actual real onion. Okay? <laughs> Wait for it. So this lie detector test has two different finger leads to detect moisture on your fingers and sweat and that kind of thing. And there's a little tiny sensor right there in the middle of the onion on the badge that you put your finger on and it measures your heart rate. So you combine those two and then it magically can tell you whether or not you're lying. Uh, I thought very carefully about my marriage and decided not to buy this badge. <laughs> um, so they did this in this case and they were selling these off and uh, I, I was talking to the person who was running it with the tour project and I was laughing with him. I was like, you know, hey, what's the deal with all the onions? I get the, I get the symbolism, you know, it's not lost on me. And she's like, all right, here's the deal. Because there was a couple people next to us and if one of them was like, $140. I'm like, well, that's right in line with all the other badges that are going on here. Except for this massive heavy weight that's around my neck right now. And she says, uh, the lady who's working behind the, the tour booth says, all right, here's the deal. You eat that onion, half off. I'm like, half off the onion and I get what? Like the badge, and she's like, "You eat the whole onion, you get 50% off the badge." And in my mind, I'm going, "I'm just gonna give you the money because <laughs> we're not gonna be doing that." So that's the that was like maybe on a Thursday, right? So we all had this huge laugh and talk about that. And she's definitely throwing it out like this is like total tongue in cheek, right? Nobody's nobody's gonna take it up on this. Uh, absolutely. absolutely, man. <laughs> <laughs> you do not throw that gauntlet down. Definitely. So. The next day I had a meet up with the folks over at EFF and their booth was right next door to the tour projects booth and so I went over there and I, right before I was meeting with Rory, I noticed that there was this massive, like if this is the end of the tour project table, there's this massive banner sign that goes up like six, seven, eight feet, something like that, for the tour project. And it's kind of moving and shaking a little bit. And I kind of like peer around it a bit because I got to go around to get into the, the EFF booth. And there's this guy standing back there, and he has this onion in his hand, and it's easily, easily 50%, maybe 60% gone. And the amount of tears streaming off of that guy's face, and the, the amount of saliva, like his shirt is just, but he's like, you can tell, he's just like, ah, oh, I, I gotta get, but he's at the point where he's realizing it may not be worth the 50% discount. <laughs> and then whoever he was with was bringing over these, there were only these little tiny cups of water that they could find. So she's carrying over like all these little tiny cups of water and setting them down. And he's just chomping away on it. I, I wish him the best. So I, I leaned around the corner real quick to the head of the, the tour project area and I was like, hey, that was a great idea. You, you got a contender. And she's like, never again. <laughs> Never again. I was like, I really, I'm thinking, she's like, shut up. <laughs> All right, and then lastly, here's a picture of Mr. Robot, Robot Rogers. So in closing, badges are artistic expression and they're a great learning opportunity. It's just a really fun time. So I, if, I know that some of us have chatted like, oh, we're just, we need to put together a DC-864 badge. I'm all on board for that. I think these things are awesome. It's like the next-ish level of a CTF. And the cool thing is, and granted it's for $20, I would easily have paid a lot more than that for this badge now that I know what's on there. Um, but the learning experience with that is, I, I now have access to the source code, so I can rewrite that myself, and now I have a playground for doing wireless, NFC, like all kinds of stuff that I may not have put together on my own without that kind of training wheel. So, it's always good to look around for people carrying black bags. Of <laughs> Any questions real quick before I do anything else? Are you, are you familiar with the, the kind of origination of, of the badge concept? So it used to be when I started, I first started going to DEF CON in 08, or 07, 08. Um, and back then, the badge was like you, if you got in line early enough, that was the whole point of line time. Get up early enough to get up, and you got an electronic badge that, I mean, everybody, that was your entry badge in the con. And um, so I've got, you know, seven or eight of them if nice. you want to play with them. Yeah, that's um, cool. Are they always electronic? This year, so no, this they're, year they're not. I think they're yeah. going to a, every other. Yeah. But you, this year, they were not. Um, Which was interesting because this was the year the tickets went up. The tickets went up because of, of, of uh, location. Hmm. Because the, the forum was so much more expensive. When I used to start going, it was at, at the Riviera, which doesn't even exist 
No. All right, so this is up here. If you guys want to play around with the frog badge, unfortunately, we don't have another frog badge, but maybe if we got another ESP32, we could like throw the code on it, play around with it. If you guys want to do that, but anyway, that's my that's my spiel.